Right. You had suggested lifting weights, and we went back and forth on this many times. You suggested that lifting weights was more important for fat loss than cardio. There was a, a picture on the screen, and there was what's better for fat loss, for losing weight, keeping weight off, all that stuff. Is it weights or cardio? Coach Greg, and I'm here with Dr. Nadalski. I think I'm saying that right. Got it. That's fine. It's good. It's all awesome. good. Awesome. I'm very excited for to today's video because I think that we have different opinions on weight loss, or obesity, different things like that. And so I'm very excited to hear from an actual doctor. You're an actual doctor, am I correct? That, that is correct. And you specialize in weight loss, so it's helping people who are overweight or obese to actually lose weight. So we have a lot in common. I'm, people say I'm a doctor, but we clearly know I'm not a doctor. I'm with a real doctor. And so we're gonna go back and forth on various topics and see, do we agree, disagree? What do we agree on, disagree on? And so hopefully you'll all learn something from us dis dis debating these things. Sounds perfect. Okay, of the following three things, diet, cardio, or lifting weights, what do you think is the most important? If you could only do one of those three things for weight loss, which is the one that would work the best? Yeah, diet, diet by by a magnitude of of a lot. <laughs> okay, far, perfect. Far diet. Far. Is there a reason for that? Why do you feel that way? Yeah, I mean, well, so you can look at just randomized controlled trials where they compare the two, and you know, when you look at the average amount of weight loss in those with obesity, you see diet results in somewhere around that five per, to six percent average. When you look at like exercise, it ends up being like you know, a few percent, one to 2%. Now, the thing is, though, they have done some trials where they've like, tried to make the calorie deficit the, the same with exercise versus diet, and it does result in similar. It's just from a practical standpoint, reducing your calorie intake versus ramping up the amount of volume it would take to, to burn that many calories over the long run. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's practically hard to do it. That's why. And, you know, we've, I've talked to, I, I think I've gone back and forth with you about like some of these compensations, you, appetite increases, potentially, maybe we decrease our energy expenditure in other ways with exercise. So over the long run, diet tends to do better. And I 100% agree. Diet is number one. Uh, the weightlifting and the cardio, although very important for your heart health and so on, it's just the icing on the cake. You can completely ruin being on a very uh, good diet, by, or sorry, you can completely ruin your cardio. You might've done two hours of cardio by just eating three cheeseburgers in yeah. five minutes. So you can see it's really important to have your diet in check. And you know that's why I keep preaching. Like you, you have to have a good diet. You can you can try to out exercise a, a bad diet, but it's going to take hours and hours of work. You can undo everything in a few minutes. Yeah, I've had a few patients that well, not not a few, a lot of patients who they'll get some sort of reason that they can't exercise. Maybe it's a new job or they get injured, and the weight just because their diet they're just like, I don't really care about my diet so much. I just exercise and exercise, and boom, the weight comes on very quickly. So I agree with you. You can just completely outdo that uh, exercise with just with just a trip to, to McDonald's. Okay, and so now we're down to cardio and lifting weights. And back in May 14, 2021, right. you had suggested lifting weights, and we went back and forth on this many times. You suggested that lifting weights was more important for fat loss than cardio. There was a, a picture on the screen, and there was what you think uh, you need to do to lose weight. And it was a guy on the treadmill, you know, doing cardio, but what you should do. And there was the one picture of the guy doing the cardio. And then the five pictures of the guy lifting the weights, it was a guy or girl, it doesn't matter. But it gave me the impression that you felt that the weights was more important for losing weight than cardio. If you had to pick one. So I just want to know what's better for fat loss, for losing weight, keeping weight off on all that stuff. Is it weights or cardio? All right. So here I'll, I'll take the nuanced position. If you can do both, I would say a combination of both. Now, if you're going to put a gun to my head, then the next tier is like, what's the one that you're actually going to do long-term? If they're saying, Hey, Dr. Spencer, coach, Greg, Dr. Greg, we, I just tell me which one I will do either. Or I would suggest I would, I would probably go with the lifting weights. Now, this, when you look at the randomized trials, when you look at purely weight loss, the aerobic training does do better. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue that, but I, my hypothesis is that over long periods of time, 
when people are trying to remember, we, we earlier said that diet's better. People should focus on the diet first, but we want to retain our lean tissue, our lean, our muscle and our bone. And if we lose some of our muscle and bone, as we're using just diet, our body tries to compensate in ways to then regain that uh, lean tissue. So in which case appetite increases and other things. So if, if, if you're not going to do a combination of them and you're just asking like, which one, like I will only do one, I would lean towards lifting weights. Now, again, we could, we could, uh, we could debate that, but that's, that's what I would probably lean towards. So kind of what I heard is that based on randomized trials, it sounds like you're saying the research and the literature says that cardio is going to burn uh, more fat and be better for overall weight loss, which is my point, which is the studies that I've read because cardio in fact burns more calories per minute than lifting weights. Do, would you agree with that? Yeah. Cardio yeah. Per it, hour? It, it, it does. It, you, you could, you can make up for the calories in, in terms of lifting weights, but it, it takes an immense amount of volume. So my standpoint is like, forget about the lifting weights for calories. And then also the whole thing about, you know, people are like, Oh, you got to get a bigger engine. You got to boost all, you got to boost your metabolic rate by uh, gaining some muscle. Well, you know, from a basal metabolic standpoint, you know, you, obviously we want people to increase their muscle, but it's really probably con- retaining that muscle to then while you're doing stuff during the day, you're burning more. So I, I would say over long periods of time, and we don't, we don't really have the trials for this. We have these short six to 12 month trials that you know, they're not yeah, maybe two years that, that aren't that great for it. But I would say, I think retaining that lean tissue is, is most important. And then just focusing on the diet for the pure uh, caloric decrease. Now, again, adding in the, the, the cardio does help because then you can eat a little bit more, not feel as miserable, but I would lean towards the lifting weights from a practical standpoint. Yeah. And so basically, I mean, I think you don't have to go with what the research says. I think that anecdotally, if that's your personal experience, if that's what you've seen, there's nothing wrong with saying that. And so you're saying that if you had to pick one, maybe it's for you or perhaps your clients that you would choose lifting weights over cardio and myself, it's the opposite. Now, if somebody said, Greg, for the rest of your life, you have to choose between lifting weights and doing cardio like if you don't you die i had a, the gun to my head and i'm forced i'm actually choosing cardio despite the fact that i was a professional bodybuilder because i think cardio is more beneficial than weights not only for your health and longevity but for everything in general just allowing you to eat more food to to feel better to to look better um i don't think that you need to lift a lot of weights to to look really good i think that we overemphasize how much muscle you need to look good. And I think that people who are trying to say boost their metabolism through lifting weights, they're going to be shocked at how little it actually does. I believe studies say, is it 10 pounds of muscle increase gains approximately 70 calories on your BMR? Is it roughly about that 70 calories with a 10 pound? What's your, what's your take on that? It's around that much. It's that's, that's why when people start, you know, they use that marketing language, we're going to boost your metabolism by focusing on lifting weights. I think it's, I think it's the wrong idea because that's not actually true. I do think that, you know, we talked about that non-exercise activity, getting up and just walking around you, you probably with more muscle, you burn more calories during the day. So my other argument would be like, okay, we still want people not to just be sedentary. We want them to walk around and maybe not be purposeful exercise. And so if you have a little bit more muscle, if you retain that lean, lean mass, while you're doing that non-exercise activity, the walking around and going to the store and doing chores, you will be burning more during that. So I, I, it's, it's hard. It's, it's actually, it's hard to argue because cardiovascular exercise, aerobic exercise is, is awesome. I can't, I can't argue there. Um, and but, that's a great, it's a great point that you brought up because I said the 70 cal calories per 10 pounds, but that's your BMR. That's not right. calling, that's not counting your knee. As you said, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. If you have more muscle, like I have a lot of muscle, probably 50 extra pounds, which if you do the math 50 times, uh, the seven calories per pound, 350 calories a day. I mean, it's, it's, it's not as much as you would think, but it is substantial. It's a lot. However, everything I do during the day, when I go for uh, a, a session in the gym, I'm lifting heavier weights because I have more muscle. So I'm burning more calories when I'm raking leaves when I'm mowing the lawn. When I'm on my bike ride, I'm burning more calories because I have big muscles that can produce a lot of power. So I'm burning more calories. So that 350, if you figure it out over the course of the whole day, it's probably 700. So definitely lifting weights. We're not trying to discourage people from thinking, well, weight lifting is useless. So it's only 70 calories. There is that added benefit. So, I mean, that's a really good point. 
The other, the other thing that this is, and this is just kind of hypothesis uh, driven with more muscle, we have more area and more storage depot for like glucose. And, and there's probably a nutrient partitioning effect that like, if we have more muscle, we can eat a little bit more, more, uh, more of that nutrient isn't going to be stored as fat. So that that's an, it's very hypothetical, but I think that probably plays a role even you know, I don't know if it's on the even playing field as how much uh, caloric expenditure we have, but nutrient partitioning and storage depot for metabolic health is also important. But, you know, again, then doing the aerobic or non-exercise activity with more muscle is great too. That's why I'd say a combination if you can. Um, yeah. But, but if you had to choose one, I don't know. It's, it's hard. The other thing is my patients have, a, you know, obesity. So like doing a lot of cardio is, it can be really hard at first. Whereas like we can get them on a, on a bench press and we can have them walk, but running biking's easier, mind you, but running can be really hard. Sometimes a rowing machine can be really difficult as well. So like working on just simple compound movements uh, with machines and lifting weights can be an easier uh, task than st starting ramping up the, the, the cardio. So yeah, I'll, I'll throw that out there as well. And I think that's a good point because I do a lot of videos of people who do these weight loss challenges at 50 pounds, a hundred pounds in three months. It's amazing that they're doing this, but, and I just recorded one the other day and I was so discouraged watching it. Day one, a three, a guy's not in shape, a three mile run on the beach in the sand. Doesn't work out. Never done anything. My calves are sore. I'm hurting the next day. He's running up a mountain. I'm like, what are you doing? So when I think of cardio, I think, and, and other people think of cardio, I think they picture a guy on it or girl, of course, circles, all on the treadmill, sprinting, running and, and being and being like panting and just hating every minute of it. And why would I suffer like that? But when I think of cardio, I'm, in, I'm picturing a, a couple or a guy or a girl with their dog walk, going for a walk in the park, enjoying life, exploring the world, having fun, getting uh, rid of some stress and burning up some calories. And it should be enjoyable at a moderate pace. Now, I mean, I'm obviously in, in really good shape. If I go for a walk, that kind of cardio is not going to do much for, for my heart. It's not going to improve it. But the average person that's wa watching this video, that's perhaps they're 300 pounds, they're not into exercising. Just go for a simple walk. Don't think, oh, I got to do intervals. I got to do hit cardio. I just say, do moderately intense cardio. Just walk at a comfortable pace for as long as you can and then progressive overload from there. Become a better butter burner. For as Culver Bailey said, it's a book I read when I was about 15 years old. Better butter burner. You can burn more calories by being better and aerobically fit. When I started bike riding about four or five years ago, I could burn, say, 500 calories an hour. That was hard. That's all out. And I was sore, horrible, like suffering. Now I can go for it and do the same thing in an hour and do a thousand. And the next day I can do it again. I don't feel sore. I'm so much more aerobically fit that in that same period of time, I can burn double the calories. So just imagine, that's why for me, if I had to pick cardio over weights, for long-term weight loss, the cardio, because I'm burning so many more calories, a thousand an hour weights, I'll probably burn 300. And granted that extra muscle I have is going to burn more, more calories in my BMR, but not as much as I will benefit from doing the extra cardio. Yeah, no, I, it's, it's hard to argue with that, uh, that reasoning. There's an argument, however, and I'm basically on your side for this, that, um, you're going to reduce the amount of calories that you burn in, in the rest of the day after cardio session. So for example, I burn that thousand calories on the bike. And then the research shows that you're going to compensate by not doing as much calorie burning after that. And so what do you think about that? Like, could you comment on that? Yeah. So I, I kind of like how you said, enjoy your aerobic exercise. So I'll, I'll just, I love my Peloton, by the way, I love, and I don't, I don't get any money from Peloton, but when I do a zone two, zone three type of uh, ride, I feel good and energized. And I, I don't think I have my little accelerometers and everything. I don't think I compensate that much. When I do a, a, a freaking hard, high intensity, I'm, I like, I'm zonked. I want to sit on the couch and I can tell despite having burned a lot of calories per unit of time during that uh, bout of, of exercise, I, I don't want to do, I don't even want to go for a walk with my wife and kids, which is terrible because that's what I actually enjoy. So, um, I think it kind of depends on, on your intensity. It, it's also, so it's, it's hard to know whether it's truly this non-exercise activity that that's changing. There's, there's research out there and they're not, 
this is cross-sectional research, meaning like they just took a snapshot of people. It looks like there may be some compensation in our basal metabolic rate. This is where that, that book burn with Herman Ponser. You could have him on your, on your, on your show here. He's the guy that's kind of promoting this idea that there's, there's this constrained energy expenditure that these people that are the most active in the world don't actually uh, burn that many more calories than some of the most sedentary people. And uh, it, it's an interesting idea. However, the people that are the most successful, I'll say my, my patients that are most successful, when we look at the national weight registry, the people that are most successful, they do the, the most amount of volume of exercise out there, whether it's aerobic resistance training, they do everything and they do a lot of it uh, and they keep the weight off for the longest. So I think there's probably some energy expenditure compensation somewhere, whether it's non-exercise activity versus our basal metabolic rate. But uh, I don't think it's it's a it's a complete one-to-one -one compensation. So yeah, you may have seen these articles, people writing that there's the the compensatory effect, the compensation that if you go out and exercise and burn off 300 calories, your body's just going to sit around and save and conserve the 300 calories. But here's the thing: the more in shape you are the less you compensate for that. So for example, if you're out of shape and you go for a one hour bike ride with me and you burn, say it's 500 calories, you're zonked for the day. The next day, you're probably sorry. It feels like you got hit by a truck. Yeah. But me, that was a joy ride. I had fun with that. And for the rest of the day, I go about my day. I can go for a walk with my girlfriend. I can walk the dogs. I can do everything. But you're, you're out of shape and it's so hard and strenuous. You just flatten out on the couch and you are done and you don't burn calories. And so that, that's why I encourage people to do cardio every day if you can, but always year round. And so what is your take on year round cardio? Because a lot of weight loss experts are saying, don't diet in the off season, only diet when it only diet like when it comes down to a bodybuilding show or bikini prep, diet when you want to lose weight and save it for the end. Don't do it every day. Just save it for the last month because, well, then your, your body's going to adapt to it. So what do you yeah. say to that? I, you know, I have two different types of patients. So I have my patients with like, obesity, whether it's just like a slight overweight obesity versus like the class three or what morbid, call them, like morbid obesity. And then I do have bodybuilders. Now I'm not a bodybuilding uh, competition uh, prepper, but from a card, I, I would consider myself a cardiometabolic uh, physician specialist. So I would say always do cardio if you can, like Absolutely. Regardless of body composition, purely from a health benefit. Um, and, and that's, that's what I, I would never say quit and let yourself, you know, uh, be sedentary or more sedentary and just lift weights. I would always from a cardio metabolic benefit, at least get some zone two training in there, walking as much as possible and a, and a nice bike ride, as you said. And so do you feel we can put this to bed? People saying that your body compensates and you burn fewer calories if you exercise them. I'm thinking, no, you burn more. Your body adapts your body adapts to doing cardio so that you can go harder than last time. You burn off more calories. And so you're actually doing the opposite of what people are saying, which is they're saying, don't do cardio because your body's going to adapt to it. I'm like, do cardio because your body adapts and allows you to go faster for longer, hence burning more fat. Yeah. I mean, there's kind of this idea of energy flux uh, as well. Like the more calories you burn, you can, you can support a bigger body mass because you're, you're burning more calories. There is something to that. We become more efficient at our exercise once we get better and better at it. So it's possible that, you know, the first, you know, initially when you started that bike ride for that hour, you feel toast and then you don't feel as toast. You may be compensating or more efficient at actually bike riding to where you may be not burning as many calories necessarily. But as you said, if you keep going higher and higher intensity, um, the, the compensation is probably less. So again, from a, just a completely cardiometabolic standpoint, I would say don't, don't do it for some possible compensation that to stop exercising. I would say always do your aerobic training as much as possible. If you're worried about, you know, trying to build muscle, maybe you tailor it back a little bit, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't quit your aerobic training. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what's really happening with that, that uh, adaptation, your body learns to do something efficiently, properly. Yeah. If you're, if you're bike riding and you are more aerodynamic and you can ride efficiently, I can cut through the wind by riding with my shoulders narrow rather than sitting up like that where the wind's blowing on me. So I may be going faster I may be going and putting out less power to go the same speed, but because I'm in better shape, I can do the aerodynamic position and push out more power. And so I'm going further in that one hour, instead of riding 20 kilometers, if I'm riding 35, I'm burning a shit ton more calories, even though I'm more efficiently riding. So I guess that, that solves that. 
Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the one thing you can do is you, you can actually, you can track your own outcomes, whether you, you know, you can get your accelerometers and whatever, but you know, if you want get a DEXA scan and, and monitor, monitor your intake, monitor everything. Uh, you can monitor your cardiorespiratory fitness as well and, and see like, Hey, this season, uh, if you're into bodybuilding this season, I was able to, uh, uh, maintain a better body composition by doing X, Y, Z versus, oh, I did better there and kept my cardiorespiratory fitness high enough to where I'm not unhealthy. It's, it's, I would say, you know, to experiment with yourself, but I, I wouldn't personally, I would not stop aerobic training.